let's talk for a minute about rounding numbers because this will help us when we try to estimate numbers and that will really aid you in checking your work to see if you're very close to an answer when you're getting into your more complicated problems. So once again, I put the place value chart for you so you can, if you're having trouble remembering where the place values are, and there's the chart that we looked at in the beginning. And our examples tell us we're supposed to round the following numbers to the given place value. In example one, they want us to round 273 to the nearest tens place. Well, as you can see, the tens place is the second digit. So I'm going to underline the number that, or the digit that I'm going to be rounding to. Now, when we're rounding, we always look directly at the digit to the right of the number we're rounding to. So the only thing that's going to matter is that three. In the question we have to ask ourselves is, is it a 5 or above? If it's below 5, we don't do anything to the 7. And it is below 5, so our 7 stays the same. If it is above, if it is 5 or above, we would have to add 1 to the 7. In no case would you ever subtract from that 7, the digit you're rounding to, when you round a number. So you're either going to leave it the same or you're going to add 1 to it. So in this case, the 3, everything past the digit we round to, will become a zero. So we have three digits. I'll just write these lines for them. The three is always going to be a zero because that's past the point where we're rounding. The seven, in this case, we leave it the same, and everything that is before there wouldn't change either. So our number would be 270. Let's take a look at rounding 8,494 to the nearest hundreds. First, let's find the hundreds place. It's the first four. Then we're going to look at the digit directly to the right. Well, a 9 tells us we're going to have to add 1 to that 4. Let's take a look at the 4 digits and see what happens to them. The ones that are past the one we're rounding to, this is the one we're rounding to, become zeros. So everything past that point, we can put zeros down. Now, we have to add 1 to our 4, making it a 5, and then we didn't have to change the 8. The number it's rounded to as hundreds is 85 hundred or eight thousand five hundred. Thirty three thousand seven hundred sixty two they want us to round to the nearest thousands. First we found the thousands place. It is our second three. Then we look to the digit directly to the right. Everything, let's see, I'll put down my five digits here so you can see what I'm doing. Everything to the right of the number I'm rounding to becomes a zero. I look at my three, I mean, at my seven, and I say, hmm, that means it's bigger than a five. I'm going to have to add one to the three, making it a four. And then the first three would just stay the same. The number would be 34,000. And for example four, let's look at rounding 495 to the nearest ten. The number we're rounding to is the in the tens place. It's the nine. And we're going to look to the number to the right, the five. That five is going to make us have to add one to our nine. We'll take a look what happens when we add one to the nine. Of course, everything in the ones place becomes a zero. It is past the number we're rounding to. We add one to our nine, it becomes a ten. I have to carry and add another one, carry my one over and add it to the four, making it a five. So 495 rounded to the nearest ten is really 500. What would we do? What would we use this for? Well, a lot of times it helps us add long uh, lists of numbers fairly quickly to estimate the answer. In other, um, in other words, we're going to get close to the answer. If we want to estimate the sum or difference of example 5, which is a sum, by rounding each of the numbers to the nearest 10 and then adding them together. The number we're going to be rounding to is in the tens place. I'm just going to underline them. The column we're going to be looking at is in the ones place. Now, we're only going to be changing the digit that we round to if we have a 5 or greater. As you can see, only the last two numbers have greater than 5. So, we would change a 52, we would round it to 50. We would round 33 to 30. We would round 15 to 20, because we had to add 1 to that, two, um, that other one. And we would round 29 to 30. Can we add these numbers fairly quickly? Yes, we can. Everything in the ones place is zero. All we have to do is add the tens place. Five plus three is eight. Plus two is 10. Plus three gives us 13. Our answer, our estimated answer, 130. What about subtraction in example six? If we round to the nearest tens place, once again, the digits we're interested in rounding to are in the tens place. And the column that's important to us is the ones place, the one next to it. So 
which of these are five or greater? Well, both of them are. That means I'm going to have to add one each time. My 555 would become 560. My 235 would become 240. Now, when I subtract those two, I say 6 minus 4 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, and my estimated answer, 320, is really easy for me to get to. All right, let's take a look at estimating the sum and the difference of example uh, 7 and 8 by rounding to the hundreds place. The hundreds place, in example 7, is a 0, a 1, and a 2, and I'm going to look at the digit next to it. The tens column is the only thing that matters to me. So, the only one that I have that I need to round is that first number. A round up is the first number. It would change 4,050 to 4,100. I'm going to change 3,133 to 3,100 because I didn't have to add to the digit I was rounding to. And 1,220 would round to 1,200 or 1,200. I can add these numbers together very quickly. The ones place and the tens place are all zeros. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. And 4 plus uh, 3 is 7. Plus 1 would be 8. My estimated answer, 8,400. So the same thing for example 8. The hundreds place, of course, these are the two digits. The column I'm interested in is the tens place. And both of those numbers are, f are, greater, are 5 or greater. So... For 1989, I'm going to have to add a 1 to my 9. Let's put down my two zeros in the, the final places, two uh, places. And I'm going to have to add a 1 to my 9, which would change it into a 10. And I will carry a 1 and add it to the 1 in the thousandth place. That makes it 2,000. For 1870, I'm going to have to, let's put down the two zeros again. I'm going to have to add a 1 to the 8, which makes it a 9. And I didn't have to carry, so I just had a 1 in the thousands place. When I subtract, this is fairly simple to do. I say 10 minus 9 is 1, and my answer, an estimated answer of 100.